Today we're going to discuss a really exciting discovery of an extremely massive binary black hole system that provides us with first ever evidence for an extremely important astrophysical concept, the concept known as the final parsec problem. And all of this being a result of a really exciting galactic system that technically has never been seen before. And so, hello info person, this is Anton, let's discuss this discovery and why it's actually so important, but also talk about this unusual mystery when it comes to binary black holes, and more specifically, how massive black holes become so massive. But first, let's start with these basic principles. When it comes to black holes, we generally understand how the smaller ones form, usually as a result of a supernova, with some of the bigger ones or intermediate ones potentially forming as a result of multiple collisions, such as the ones we've been observing since 2015. But some black holes can become really giant. So giant as a matter of fact that it kind of stops making sense. We'll actually discuss some of these record holders and even some of the more mysterious record holders in some of the videos you can find in the description. Some of these black holes are actually so massive that they sort of reach the limit to how big we think black holes can get. And more importantly, some of them are so massive that even if they were feeding at the highest possible speed for 13.8 billion years or the lifetime of the universe, they still should not have been as big as we've discovered. In other words, there is definitely some kind of a mystery when it comes to these really massive black holes. But the main explanation for how they get so big basically being massive collisions. Collisions between bigger black holes that become bigger and bigger as a result eventually grow into colossal sizes. And though this by itself might make sense, especially because we've seen so many galactic collisions in a lot of different locations, there is maybe a slight problem here as well. And this problem is known as the final parsec problem. And this is actually the problem that only seems to affect really massive black holes, not the smaller black holes like the ones we've seen colliding. And so, for example, for much smaller black holes, we know that as they orbit around each other, they'll produce a lot of gravitational waves that end up slowing down the partner, which then reduces their orbit over time and makes them come closer and closer to each other. That's why eventually, after a certain period of time, they'll collide, creating a larger object. So this is how small black holes usually grow. Basically here, the gravitational waves warp space-time so much that the black holes eventually collide. But for much bigger black holes at a much farther distance, so here we're talking about hundreds or even thousands of light years away, they will still be orbiting around one another, but in this case, their orbital period or their orbital velocity will only slow down as they interact with gas and a lot of other matter, including things like stars and potentially dark matter that seems to be in the vicinity, which as a result will eventually make them come closer and closer as well. But at certain point, when they come close enough, specifically approximately 3 to 4 light years away from one another, they'll most likely clear out all of the gas and all of the stars and will just be orbiting around each other without anything to slow them down. And at these faraway distances, they're not going to be producing large enough gravitational waves to affect each other either. According to modern calculations, a black hole has to be approximately 0.01 parsec away from another black hole in order to start experiencing gravitational wave slowdowns, or at least the ones that are significant enough. In other words, these two black holes have to be essentially in the same star system. But in most cases, following a galactic collision, a lot of these supermassive black holes are usually really, really far away from one another. And in essence, this implies that at certain distance, the black holes kind of get stuck orbiting around one another and don't actually have any more chances to come closer. In other words, at a distance of 3 to 4 light years away from one another, they kind of assume a more or less permanent orbit, or at least in theory, and that's because we don't actually have any means to explain how they could potentially come closer. Because here the gravitational waves are just not powerful enough and there's also nothing between them, no gas or stars, to help them reduce the velocity. And in the past, researchers discovered a lot of different supermassive black hole binaries that seem to contain black holes at a relatively far away distance. Here's one of the examples of a double quasar, two different supermassive black holes separated by thousands of light years and basically orbiting around but not really colliding. Which is the essence of this unusual mystery, and it's known as the final parsec problem. Basically, once the black holes approach that last parsec, or 3.2 light years away from one another, there doesn't seem to be any mechanism that can make them come closer and collide. And if so, 
How exactly do they grow bigger? What causes them to collide and eventually grow ultra-massive? Billions of solar masses in mass. And so this unusual astrophysical mystery does not technically have a solution. But even more importantly, there was no example anywhere out there showing us that this is even true. In other words, it was an astronomical proposition, a hypothesis, but without any evidence. We would actually expect a lot of these binaries to be out there, but none were found. And that's, I guess, until now. The discovery of two black holes 750 million light years away from us that represents an example of the final parsec problem in action. Here the distance is approximately 24 light years or 7.3 parsec. So not exactly one parsec, a little bit more, but definitely the closest directly observed binary black hole system at such extreme distances. Also representing the most accurate observation with the smallest separation ever, just 24 light years at such a ridiculous distance. But what makes this system exciting is of course the total mass. It's around 28 billion solar masses, 7000 times more massive than the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way. And that's actually what's expected of these black holes if they ever do collide. Right now it's two separate bodies with an orbital period of 30,000 years. But within the next million years or so, they're going to come close enough to be within that final parsec. With signs of previous galactic collisions visible here as well. And that's probably how all of this formed. These were two massive galaxies, or at least two massive galaxies, colliding over time with the black holes falling into the center, forming this unusual binary. But the analysis from the study also suggests that, at least for now, the orbital decay must have slowed down quite dramatically and potentially has not changed at all in the last 3 million years. In other words, these two black holes might have already reached a kind of a final parsec problem area. They might be stuck in here for quite some time. They also don't seem to contain a lot of gas or a lot of stars near them, suggesting that they're unlikely to come closer anytime soon. Making this, at least at the moment, the most stable, ultra-massive binary system that potentially has a chance to remain this way for billions of years. Or at least in theory. In reality though, something might disrupt it because we know that based on evidence around us, pretty much all galaxies seem to have eventually combined their black holes into one. But how they do this is of course unknown. But there are at least a couple of explanations. So basically solutions to this final parsec problem. The first and most obvious is gas. Huge chunks of gas coming from somewhere on the outskirts and eventually disrupting one of the black holes, making it come closer. Alternatively, a third black hole, possibly a little bit smaller, or from another galaxy nearby, that disrupts the binary orbit, making O3 approach much closer and eventually collide. But a much more intriguing explanation involves the most mass in the universe, the dark matter. Here at least a few ideas propose that ultra-light dark matter can actually generate unusual waves that produce a kind of a gravitational cooling, which then, in theory, can take away some of the orbital energy from these black holes and make them move closer and closer. And so, at least for now, assuming that dark matter is real and seems to be some kind of an ultralight particle, this could be the best explanation we have. But based on the observations from this galaxy, right now we just see stagnation and permanent orbits. So essentially, the first ever confirmation for the idea of the final parsec problem. But because this is just one out of billions, it seems to be an exception, not the rule. As a matter of fact, at least two more black hole systems are known with two massive black holes in a much closer orbit. OJ287, the simulation for which you see right here, and the black hole you can learn more about in the video in the description. Here a single orbit only takes 12 years, and the black holes are only thousands of astronomical units away from one another. And also a quasar known as PKS, 1302-102, with a period of 1800 days, with an even shorter distance between the black holes. And so somehow, in these two systems, the black holes managed to solve the final parsec problem and are now orbiting much closer to one another. But how they did this is of course unknown. But since these black holes have been discovered and confirmed, it just means that the final parsec problem is just something we don't understand and cannot explain yet but something that the universe found a solution for a long time ago. We just don't have an explanation yet, we don't really understand the theory. But chances are that in the next few years, as we find more examples and discover even more of these hidden binary systems, we'll probably have more clues on what's actually happening here. 
For now, the best explanation seems to be dark matter, but a very specific type of ultralight dark matter that's able to generate extremely long waves, serving as a kind of a gravitational wave background which strips the black holes of their orbital energy. But until we get even more evidence or some other explanation from someone else, that's pretty much all we have. An exciting discovery of a very unusual radio galaxy with two massive black holes that seems to be the first ever example of the final parsec problem at work. But once we figure out what's happening here, or once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.